by Commissioner Oliveira with the invocation, please. Please stand. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we give you thanks for giving us the grace to meet today. Give us the wisdom to make good decisions to the benefit of our community and bless us all. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right, I'd like to state that all commissioners are present except for Commissioner Weeby with an excused absence. Move on to approval of the agenda. I have a motion. I have a motion to approve the agenda. Okay. I'll second. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. Aye. 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 We'll move on to the next item, which is minutes from the previous meeting. We had a meeting right here, our first one back in person. It was on September 14th. You guys had a chance to review the minutes or entertain a motion. Yeah, I move that we accept the minutes. Thank you. A second. Yes. Aye. 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 Okay, we'll move right into public comment. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons wanting to address the commission only on matters not on this agenda. If anybody would like to do that this time, we'll open up public comment. See none present, any on the web? Okay, we'll close public comment and open the public hearing. We have four items in the public hearing tonight. Since we have a couple in-house, I will just quickly read that should anyone wish to challenge any proposed action, which is subject to a public hearing list on this agenda, that person challenging any action taken after the public hearing may be limited to raising only the issues addressed at the public hearing described in this notice or in written correspondence delivered to the planning commission at or prior to this public hearing. We'll move to item number one, which is tentative track map 7033 time extension for phase five through eight. So yeah. director Esselman. On item oh, one, I'll recuse myself. Oh, okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, commissioner. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Item number one is a, a two year extension of time for tentative track 7033 phases five through eight. Uh, on January 3rd, 2008, the uh, City Council approved tentative track 7033 based on the recommendation of, of this planning commission. Since that time, phases one through four of the track have been recorded. would subdivide approximately 25 acres into 60 single family residential lots ranging in size from about 11,000 to 17,000 square feet, as well as a drainage basin lot. On September 1st, 2021, the property owner requested approval of an extension of time to record the remaining phases because they had only recently acquired the property and additional time is needed for them to move on the project to completion. If approved, the extension of time would extend the expiration time for this track until June 3rd, 2023. Uh, the development agreement for phases one through four has expired and therefore approval and recordation of a new development agreement for phases five through eight, which we're discussing today. Thank you. As, um, will be brought to your commission for the consideration. So a new development agreement will be brought to your consideration later uh, at a later date. Uh, staff believes that the eventual recordation of the approved subdivision would be beneficial to the city. Staff recommends the planning commission adopt resolution 21-385, a resolution recommending that the city council approve the requested two-year extension of time for this track, phases five through eight. Subject to the conditions of approval, in resolution 08-1984, approved by the City Council on June 3rd, 2008. There's also a negative declaration on file. And with that, that concludes my, my presentation. Thank Do you have any questions? Any questions, questions for planning? No. 
Okay, some questions from up here. We'll open up public comment on this item. Does anyone wish to speak in favor or against this item? Item one. Okay, we'll close the public comment and bring it back if any commissioners have any questions for staff or we will entertain a motion. A motion that um, we approve the two-year extension of time for tentative track map number 7033 located at the southeast corner of North Shafter Avenue and East Fresno Avenue within the city of Shafter subject to the conditions approved by the city council on June 3rd of 20, 2008 to expire on June 3rd, 2023. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Yes. Yes. Ah, yes, I. Okay, let's get Mr. Sanchez. Yeah, we'll take a second to our other commissioner to get back. Hey, Vanessa, I think you probably will have to run it for some reason it's not working for me. Right, we will move on to item number two, temporary land use permit number 18-104, one year time extension. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Honorable Commission, this item is a, is a one year extension of time for um, temporary land use um, permit 18-104. On August 14th, 2018, your commission approved the original temporary land use permit to allow for the sale of baked potatoes and roasted corn in the parking lot of the La Hacienda Market located at 315 James Street. Mm -hmm. Since that time, your commission has allowed two extensions of times mm -hmm. for this temporary use. And this is the third extension request. Uh, uh, temporary land use permit is allowed a maximum of four one-year extensions. So we're on our third one now. Um, the cooking and retail activities allowed under this EOT would occur from uh, 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Wednesday through Sunday. The property owner of the La Hacienda ma uh, Market has given written consent for the use and no issues or complaints have been submitted to the city during the active period of this temporary land use permit beginning in 2018. Temporary land use permit 18-104 has a condition that requires the applicant to obtain the necessary permits from the Kern County Environmental Health Department as well as a business license from the city. Staff recommends the piece, uh, the planning commission adopt resolution. Thank you, Vanessa. 21-386 approving a third one year extension of time for this temporary land use permit for baked potato and roasted corn sales in the La Hacienda Market parking lot. A notice of exemption is on file. Okay. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions from the commissioners? Seeing none, we'll open up public hearing. Anyone wish to speak for or against this item? Okay, close the public hearing on this item and we'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve temporary land use permit 18 uh, 104 for the baked potato and roasted corn cells in La Hacienda Market parking lot. I'll second. Yes. Aye. 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 Okay, moving on. Item number three, conditional use permit number 21-121. Yes. Uh, this item is, is CUP 21-21 to conditionally allow for the off-sale, the off-sale of beer and wine at Shafter Medical Pharmacy located at 825 Central Valley Highway, just, just up the road. Mm -hmm. Off-sale means that beer and wine sold at the establishment must be consumed off-site in a legal location, such as within a private residence. Approval of the off-site off-sale of beer and wine by the city is also required by the state prior to the issuance of a state type 20 license that allows for off-sale of beer and wine, but not liquor. The city's approval is necessary because currently the census tract where the pharmacy is located has a maximum number of five licenses allowed within the tract, and currently seven businesses are permitted for off-sale beer and wine. 
Therefore, state regulation requires that the, the, city, the city decide whether either public convenience or necessity would be served by allowing the additional license within the census tract. Staff believes that public convenience would be served by allowing the license because the pharmacy is located at the intersection of Laredo Highway and Central Valley Highway, which is a convenient location for the purchase of beer and wine. Additionally, the floor plan, floor plan, do you show the floor plan there, Vanessa? As you can see, the floor plan shows the coal box to be used to keep the beer and wine cold, has a typical footprint for a beer and, beer and wine aisle, the sale of beer and wine at pharmacies is not an uncommon allowance within most cities, and the proposed square footage is within reason. Uh, the zoning ordinance specifies standard conditions of approval for the approval of alcohol-related uses, including providing the city with a copy of the approved state license and the applicant's acknowledgement that the Planning Commission has the power to revoke or modify the CUP if harm or retail related problems are demonstrated to occur because of criminal or antisocial behavior. Because of this, staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt Resolution 21-387, a resolution approving CUP 21-121 that allows for the off-site the off sale of beer and wine at Shafter Medical Pharmacy, adopt findings and approve the conditions of approval and uh, a notice of exemption is on file for this project. Okay, thank you. Any upfront questions for staff? The commissioners? Okay, we'll open a public hearing on this item. If anyone wishes to speak on item number three, please do so now. Anybody from the audience? <laughs> All right, close the public hearing. Any more questions or discussion? We'll entertain a motion on this item. A motion to adopt resolution 21-387, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Shafter approving conditional use permit number 21-121 for off-sale beer and wine sales, type 20 license at Shafter Medical Pharmacy located at 825 Central Valley Highway within the City of Shafter. Could you explain the convenience part of that again, what you said would serve a convenience to the Well, it's because of its central location within the downtown mm -hmm. core, it's along two major highways. We either have to make a necessity finding, I don't think there's a necessity for this, but you can also make a convenience finding, meaning that it's in the public convenience to allow this, this license to occur. Because it is at essentially the corner of those two major highways, it would be convenient for people to pop in and and get some beer and wine before they came home for a party or, or whatever. So that is that is our reasoning for making the convenience finding. Okay, we have a motion on the table. Okay. Yes. Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll move on to item number four, conditional use permit. Number 21-116. This is kind of the big one for the evening. This is the last one, item number four. Um, Honorable Commission, this item is conditional use permit 21-116. To conditionally allow for the construction of a multi-use development, including a 5,256 square foot drive through car wash facility with covered vacuum bays and a two-story approximate 1,088 square foot office building a new 1,800 square foot drive through restaurant with 500 square foot patio, and to repurpose the existing two-story approximately 4,291 square foot building located at 402 Central uh, Avenue to include retail space, a future fast food restaurant, and office space. Why don't you move that to the, to the site plan, Vanessa? Thank you. <clears throat> Um, the proposed uh, development is located on the east side of Central Valley Highway or State Route 43 between Central Avenue and East Laredo Highway. Uh, the zoning ordinance specifies that operations that include a drive-through component require the approval of a CUP or conditional use permit 
in the general commercial zone district, which is what this zone is. Uh, the drive through facilities at the proposed location are subject to specific development standards related to drive through lane design and the provision of outdoor trash containers, which have been which have been included in the recommended conditions of approval. Primary access will be from state from the, from a state highway requiring an encroachment permit from Caltrans as part of the developers developers preliminary consultation with Caltrans. The developer provided Caltrans with a queuing analysis for the project. After reviewing the plan, Caltrans determined that the project design would not result in any spillback of queuing vehicles onto Central Valley. Essentially, they won't end up backing up onto the, onto the freeway itself as they're trying to get into the facility. Uh, the applicant also requested a sign program that includes two 30-foot tall double-sided pole signs with nine, 195 square feet of sign face per side and three monument signs, each having an overall height of five feet. To let you know the sign standard in the general commercial zone district is one sign at a maximum height of 25 feet and a maximum of 100 square feet per sign face. Therefore, the sign program, if approved, would allow the developer to have signage that would not normally be allowed under the existing zoning ordinance standards. Uh, to give the commission kind of a sense of scale, the Apple Market sign is a 35 foot pole sign. There's only one, uh, and it has 138 square feet of sign face. So um, the sign uh, at the Apple Market site was legal under the previous zoning ordinance, and now it's considered legal non conforming. So at the time, that was a perfectly allowable sign. Um, staff confirmed that the five foot tall monument signs are consistent with the existing development in the downtown commercial district. However, the requested 35 foot pole signs would result in a notable deviation from the existing commercial signage in the downtown commercial district and would set a precedent for signage deviation within downtown. Uh, just today, staff received one comment from the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District requesting, among other things, a health risk assessment. However, the, the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District has already approved the project's air quality impact analysis, uh, and they approved that on August 19th of this year. And because there are already one, there is already one state highway and a railroad track in proximity to the site, the project's health risk contribution to this baseline is considered negligible in comparison by staff. Uh, additionally, it is unknown what types of equipment are needed for the restaurants at this time and, uh, and, and the other uses. And therefore staff considers the preparation of a health risk assessment premature. Um, therefore the comment from the, from the air, air pollution control district is noted for the record and staff does not recommend the preparation of a health risk assessment for the project at this time, but can be prepared later at a later date. Um, Staff believes the proposed development would benefit the community from the additional services it provides. Staff recommends the Planning Commission adopt Resolution 21-388, a resolution approving COP, sorry, CUP 21-116 that allows for the multi-use development, adopt findings, and approve the conditions of approval. A notice of exemption is on file. And that concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. There's a lot there. Um, any initial questions before we would open up? Yes. To, does the recommendation include the sign program? I staff would say that it's ultimately up to the planning commission. What we would allow, what we would say is this: we would set a significant precedent. So no, my very, my, very my much question is: if we recommend this, are we recommending the sign to? Correct. Okay, that's the correct. Okay. The comment about um, Caltrans saying it won't have any backup onto Central Valley. So just that there's plenty of um, there's driveway space. There's plenty of queuing with, according to them in their analysis, and they provided a, by a traffic engineer, they provided an analysis to Caltrans at their request. Caltrans okay. reviewed it and determined there is enough queuing on the site that the queuing wouldn't spill over offsite and into okay. the highway. Okay. 
I mean, obviously there'll be impact on Central Valley with people turning into this new. Certainly, certainly services. there would there would be there would be um, probably be additional cars uh, going into that site, obviously, um, but they would also have to do traffic improvements um, to to allow to accommodate that additional flow, mm -hmm. D cell lanes, turn pockets, and again the queuing. You know, once you get on the site, the ability to queue on site so that you're not hanging out on Central Valley Highway. Gotcha. So Caltrans would go and put like turn lanes, um, like a separate turn lane to go into the Caltrans would approve it. Approve. Ultimately, the developer would pays have. for those pays for those improvements, but they would prepare a um, a site plan that included uh, traffic improvements, not only to Central Valley Highway, but also internally within the site, they would have to get those plans um, reviewed and approved by Caltrans in order to get their encroachment permit because they would be encroaching upon the highway itself. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, there, there will be necessary improvements to make sure that uh, cars can safely enter and exit that project site. Yeah, because I think currently with the traffic traveling through there, if you're going to signal to make that turn, I mean, traffic flows through at a pretty high rate, right. speed down that, that, that area, you know? Right. Generally what happens is they, there ends up being a decel lane, essentially a, same, a, a pocket lane where you, you come out of the flow of traffic and you can decelerate to get in safely. Yeah. That's, that is what would happen in, in terms of this site. There would be some sort of a decel pocket so that you would get out of flow and be able to decel safely and then you know, ingress into the site. I wonder if that would narrow down the highway to single lanes. No, that would be a part of their, they that would, would have, go into the, their you property. You want to let Melissa explain oh, that that's, okay. that's not the plan. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Here, hold on. Yeah, let's open up public uh, hearing and then you can come up. So we'll remember any questions that you have. Yeah, no, come on, come on up to the, to the podium, please. I just wanted to clarify that we're not, um, decel lanes aren't currently part of the proposal. Um, Caltrans has reviewed the site plan several times and construction plans have already been submitted to them and to the city and decel lanes aren't currently included. Um, however, there will be a widening of the entrance that's off of Central so that that one could be utilized for traffic as well as um, we're adding additional entrances and exits. We're removing some and adding some. So there won't be more entrances than there are now, but they'll be utilized so that each space can have its basically kind of own entrance and exit for the convenience of the separate uses. Um, so does and, that mean you have the one on Central and there's, I'm sorry, Central Avenue? Yes. And then there's three on Central Valley Highway. Is that yes. right? Yeah. And um, we'll also, Caltrans is requiring no parking signs to be installed along the highway so that cars can't park there to block cars to be able to get over towards the curb before they turn into the development. And that's a condition of the Okay. I apologize. I thought that widening was actually de selling. I, I, I apologize <laughs> for the misrepresentation. No Interesting. So will all three businesses connect but via parking lot? Or are they all yeah. separate parking lots? All... You could drive from the car wash all the way to the yes. other businesses. Yes. Vanessa, around... why don't you bring up that site plan again, just so they can sort of see it up on the big board. Kind of a lane along the back okay. east side up against the railroad tracks. Hard to see, but behind the queuing, there's a way that you can bypass the car wash and come out at the the vacuum <clears throat> stalls, and then it flows through, and you'd be able to go through the parking lot where Brookside is, and out the central driveway if you wanted to. <clears throat> Sorry. I had a hard time making it clear. Okay. 
The second drive through restaurant is where the depot is, right? Yes. I, I, that was hard for me to see on the yeah. map there. I couldn't, kept saying two and I couldn't find the second one. It would, it would be located uh, in the area where the U-shaped part of the building is located, you know, okay. where the patio is in the middle. Okay. It will fill that space in and then okay. be a little bump out where the window is located. Okay. Okay. Where you can see where the cars are queued up. Okay. Why don't we do this? I'm going to officially open the uh, public hearing on this item. We've already had some discussions, so then maybe we can have the developer address some of that. If you would state your name and address for the record. And Yes, my name is Rick Judge, spelled J-H-A-J. -J. Hello, fellow commissioners. Thank you for hearing our project tonight, and we're excited to be back in Shafter again, developing and trying to bring something to the city of Shafter. Um, what I, my goal tonight is to kind of explain the project, get some clarifications, um, and also walk you to what we're trying to do. Um, first and foremost, you know, we are excited to bring, uh, something that Shepard does not have, and that's, uh, countryside car wash, uh, high-end car wash, something similar to the crude through the style you saw in Bakersfield, which now have turned into misters. Um, and, uh, but we will bring in a quality of wash that is not seen anywhere else in Kern County, as far as the service, the equipment and the type of service that provides for our, our clientele to come through. And uh, when we acquired this property, um, this is a difficult piece of property to develop, you know, for anyone else to come in, uh, being narrow, being very long. Um, there were many opportunities here. So uh, we have gone through many iterations of site plans um, with staff, and I want to commend staff for their help and their um, wonderful uh, communication between ourselves and engineering team to have this come to fruition. Uh, this site plan has gone through many iterations back through Caltrans already. So we're coming today to you with uh, not as a site plan that hasn't been reviewed, just gone through thorough uh, processes. Uh, Caltrans has signed off and their <coughs> engineering team has reviewed it. And uh, we had to hire a third party engineering firm to do a study analysis and to verify traffic flows would work here. So, um, you know, it's not just uh, us assuming, it's based upon actual certified engineers showing that this will flow right. And the Caltrans engineers, as you all know, Caltrans is not very easy to accommodate in a, a, and appease to their guidelines. So they were very um, excited about this development um, and made sure that it would flow correctly. So we took a lot of things into consideration developing this site. Um, you know, traffic is important, safety is important. And these are things that we think about anytime we do, do the development. Um, and so with that, as you can see, and if, if I like, I could, I could walk over the site and point out a few items to you guys. Um, but uh, we took into consideration um, having large stackability. So you wouldn't have any backup coming onto Laredo or I mean, onto the existing highway, um, allowing good circulation on the site. That was very critical. So if someone can enter and like, as Suzanne was mentioning, could drive through the site next onto Central or access other facilities. Um, this is in essence, one large center, um, which is very unique, even though they're, they're separate parcels um, and can be individual business on their own. That we're combining that to give it the best opportunity for the customers coming through and people that are patroning the site to make sure they could flow through correctly. Um, and so when we acquired this, this entire property was to make sure that we could uh, bring a project that would be, Shaft would be proud of. Um, as far as uh, accessibility, unless I did clarify, uh, you know, we do have to uh, widen drive approaches. We do have to make sure that uh, one is only exit only for this entire site, even though three different parcels only has two true access points to it off of the main highway. We actually gave up an access point to one of the facilities, uh, which was difficult, but we did that because that was a recommendation of Caltrans to help better safety and help better traffic control. Uh, normally, again, being separate parcels, each parcel is allowed an access. Uh, we gave one up because of that. And one is exit only. So I'd like to clarify that, but you don't, it's only two access points off of the main highway, one being an exit. Um, and if you don't mind, I'll kind of walk up there and kind of point out. Sure. You guys are looking. What we've designed is uh, basically the exit point is the primary source inside the center here. Two large ceilings that come in here into the lot. This stackability is larger than most of any we've seen in Kern County. We also have one currently operational task. This stack could 
accommodate almost 14 cars more than our site in past site can. But again, we wanted to make sure we had good fueling so we wouldn't have any type of flow back onto, onto the road. This access point as you can here is you can see the radius turn ratio. We have designed two drive through points to give you deep influx into the property before you come back to pick up window. Again, very large staff. If someone does come in here, we're trying to bring national brands to City of Shafford, like we have Taco Bell, as you know, we're bringing in Starbucks. Uh, we're trying to keep that quality of product coming into City of Shafford. So that is our ultimate goal here is to attract national brands, someone that can come in and, and utilize this type of staff to go ahead and drive. But coming through here, this is a complete pass through. I can pass through here and also come through. And this is an exit only, no access point into this. People can't come turn into here. So you only have one access here. And the existing access is already there off the highway for the Brookside. So in reality, we have only added one additional access point to the entire front end of this road that then what was already existing. As you guys know, this access point is there, it's been there for uh, this old Brookside. So um, we took a lot of consideration to make sure traffic flow was very, very important here. And then again, the existing exit here to come out the central avenue. This facility here, the old Brookside, uh, all through the old city of Shafter, and we spoke with planning. We want to make sure this building has good character to it. You know, currently it's just a facility, um, doesn't have much use, has a great street presence, but the, it doesn't have good attraction. So our ultimate goal was is to bring the idea of the depot back to City of Shaft. You know, keep on our sign as we have a nice sign as a countryside depot. Why are we trying to keep the essence of Shaft and I think the essence of what this project used to be with the old railroad? And the idea on this development is if we could develop this into maybe a common outside seating patio here with maybe one or two have food facilities, a few of are where to serve some good quality food, maybe some beer and wine. Maybe go for sort of restaurant style capability and have an outside patio for people to share and sit outside and kind of enjoy the weather when it's a good day in, in, the, in City of Shafter. Um, but with a small drive through pickup here too, so people can order and pick up and go home. So we took a lot of careful thought in developing all this out. And the idea on this building is in the next phase is to up the imaging of it, but try keeping the, the characteristics of the building, get some storefront, get some more visibility, kind of uh, make it more of an attractive site that currently is not really being. On a very good form in City of Shafter. So, with me, as you can see, I mean, we're one, two, three, almost four, three blocks long. Um, one of the largest grant companies, I would say, throughout the city as far as one center. So, with that, these are actually three, could be three separate projects, and we could have applied and said, well, we want to, we want to do a sign, the project by itself, this project with a sign, do it by itself, and this is a sign. And accommodate some of the guidelines. Our goal was, you know what, we'll forego some of that those opportunities, make it one larger site, which could accommodate City of Shafter, people that come to the city, and, and make it flow well. So uh, that was the ultimate point and opportunity on this. Any questions about the, the design or the flows? I'd love to answer those for you. Uh, I have a question about um, pedestrians. So, yeah. like you just said, there's four city blocks. There's certainly um, you know, mitigated uh, crosswalk on Central Avenue mm -hmm. and then way down on Lairdo. Um, there's people who are at the post office and or there's a Frosty Cream. What else is there? There's the pizza place, Sonic. Is is there any entertaining of or would we do crosswalks at any of those intersections, one of those blinking light kind of things to get people across the Central Valley Highway? Uh, uh, Brent, that's a good question. Uh, that is something that we would not be able to do without a, approval of Caltrans. And normally Caltrans want those on major intersections as you see a crosswalk to come on a lighted intersection to where you have cross traffic to have pedestrian cross traffic. So that's why Central and Lerdo has those cross traffic points. But I don't believe Caltrans will allow on a major highway to have cross traffic on a non-signalized location. So uh, unfortunately, we would, personally wouldn't be able to uh, see that as a possibility. I, again, we have no objections to them like that, but I don't think that's something that they would allow us to do. No, that's going to happen. <laughs> People are going to run across. It already does. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. going to be. You know, but we, we are uh, cleaning up the sidewalk again, and, and, I, and we're also uh, 
trying to make sure that the we have to widen some of the, the front edge of that sidewalk unless if I am correct to give it more traffic more pedestrian walk we'll say which is currently is not there and again the cost factor if you can imagine that how much improvement we have to do there is, is quite intense but again it, it's we feel it's the right thing to do to bring a good project here to the city of chapter uh, along with that too is with this new facilities um, you know we're estimating up to more 50 positions of new employees to hire between the car wash fast food restaurants and this office space facility so you can bring a lot of new jobs to the city of Shafter. So we're going to bring some more tax revenue to the city of Shafter with, uh, you know, with sales and sales tax. And um, I have you know, a question about your car wash. What's that? I have a question about the car wash. Yes, so you have one in Taft, you say. Yes. So how much um, how much water does a car wash use? Uh, you know, it's a good question. We actually uh, on this site are going to be installing a reclaim system. Right. So uh, majority of the water will be reclaimed on site and reused inside the tunnel. So to put in perspective, uh, running eight cars through a car wash is less water than you washing your car at home with your okay. water hose. So the amount of water after the reclaim system comes in place is much minimized. And uh, that's something, that, again, it's, it's uh, something that is not truly really required, but something that we do do as a developer to make sure that we bring in those type of ideas to not to waste water. You know, water is very important here. Um, in Kern County, especially in the city of Shafter and other areas. So we, we, we put in a very high-end uh, reclaim system. We use an RO system as well to make sure that when the, the cars leave the, system, leave the tunnel, they, they're put on with clean RO water to get spot-free spot quality, which again, is something that we do that most people do not. It's just something that we think is required to give a good quality product to our, our client base. Okay. I have a question, sir. Yes, sir. On, on the... Um... I think it's the east side of the property. Is there going to be any type of barrier there that's between the 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 site and the railroad tracks? Uh, the railroad tracks. Okay, yeah, I'll come over here. So, um, this property here, from this property line here, is what you're discussing. Yes. This property is owned by the railroad. Okay. They keep this as a, I believe, I'm correct, a 15 foot easement. It might be 20, but don't understand. But that's required by the railroad to set that. They use that for the maintenance, but eventually what the ultimate goal is, and it's been improved through I think it's design for stage after is when they come with the train, they're actually gonna put a block wall that's already been, you know, nothing weird, nothing we're gonna do. There'll be a block wall that comes all the way through for the uh eventual bullet train one day. Now yes, so high, speed high speed rail. rail. Oh. High speed rail. Yes. So that will be blocked all the way across here whenever they develop that. That's part of the bullet train design. So in the current, his question in the current design, no, nothing. There is nothing. nothing current. Okay. We have over a 50 foot buffer from here in the railroad. So your pavement ends and then it's dirt to the railroad. There, there will the be gravel. landscape in this area. And this, um, basically from where the trash enclosure is, the trash enclosure will end up in the landscape that we're going to be putting in the will be used as a drainage swale. So there will be a six foot fence along that and then landscape there. Um, and then the rest of the space has landscaping between the curb and the property. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Hi, I'm Raji Brar. Last name B-R-A-R. Um, and I had a comment for you regarding the water. Um, I serve on the Regional Water Quality Control Board. I'm a board member there. And we actually um, regulate car washes. So your concerns about the water is actually paramount to the water board, as we all are aware of what's happening with water right now. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, it's a great recycle system. So car washes actually help communities save water in a way because of what he just said. And also, as far as the chemicals that are used, everything is regulated by the Central Valley Regional Water Quality Control Board. Um, so I wanted to kind of address your sure. concern Thank on the you. water. I know that's a, a big one. But I think also what Rick had mentioned about this whole project um, and your concerns about Caltrans, um, and, and as you can attest to Caltrans, dealing with Caltrans is never easy. It's a, they can pretty much kill a project. So the fact that they have gone back and forth with us and went through this project, the, the fine tooth comb, uh, a lot of your concerns were already addressed by them. That is something they are off the bat always dealing with. And uh, so for us, 
um, in a way to kind of, I understand your concerns about traffic, all that, but believe you me, uh, with Caltrans, we've already gone through all that. And that is the number one thing that was on their mind. So we are very confident as far as cars not backing up as to what you were concerned about. So it was one of the big gives was the, the exit only? Yeah. Was the contention? Yeah. So, I mean, that way we don't have what you're concerned about happening. And for them, they've used, they looked at other car washes, the same concerns. And that's how they were able to kind of understand this will work. And for when Rick was talking about our tap car wash, that was a good learning for us. So we know on our busiest days, you know, what we're going to have and the stackability we have here is more than enough. So um, we took all that into consideration when we designed this project. So, but yes, I understand your concern. That's everyone's concern. It's the last thing you want, even as a business owner, you don't, when you have drive throughs you don't want cars backing onto main, major highways. So that's a, something that was top of mind to all of us. Uh, and I know Rick was being uh, modest here, but this is a really big undertaking for us. Um, just to give you a little background, we are family owned and operated. We are not a big corporation by any means. And so when we do come around and look at projects, it takes what we have to be very vested in the entire project. We don't just kind of go willy and nilly and think, oh, this will be great, but we put everything into it to make sure it's successful. And um, my dad uh, started with his gas station on 7th, started in Enos Lane about 28 years ago, uh, countryside. We, so we've been in Shafter for a long time. He lives like right down the street. Um, my kids go to RBG. Uh, you know, um, we're local folks uh, and we've grown over the years and we've grown here in the communities, especially in Shafter. Um, whether it's a Taco Bell or with a, now trying to be in Starbucks, but we're local. You know, we're not somebody who built something and runs away. We live here. I get phone calls from folks that are in my drive through at Shafter complaining about the time, uh, which I don't mind because that's what, what happens when you're local and you belong to the same community as folks. So there's a lot of pride that we take into this project and we want to make sure it works well for everybody because we live here and folks know how to pull up to your house and say, hey, I have a problem. Sure. So that's something we're really, um, really matters to us. So this is a really big undertaking. I know Rick was being modest. It's a huge, it's a huge shopping center. It's a lot of work, um, but we believe in it. We think it's going to turn out absolutely wonderful. It's going to be great for the city. Uh, I think when, as folks drive in from Wasco, especially as they're headed to Shafter, I think this is going to be kind of this beautiful, shiny thing you're looking at. And Brookside, um, we used to have a Brookside. We actually used to get our food catered at our, um, from this Brookside. So we've worked with the family for a long time with the Jeffries. And um, so this project is, you know, we have a lot vested into it, not just financially, but, you know, emotionally, it matters to us. We're here, we're local. We want to be good partners with the city. And, um, it, and we care about this just as much as you do. We want it to work for everybody. So I just wanted to make tell, sure I shared Tell us you. about the, um, the ask for the, the sign program. Cause that's going to, that's yeah, going to be a deal. I, I see, I is see, it, is see. it marketability to attract, uh, well, I, yeah, go ahead. But I think absolutely. I think, you know, when you have a business, you want to make sure it succeeds. And right now you all know what we all went through with COVID. It's very difficult, you know, um, even staffing folks right now is difficult or staying open, keeping our doors open during COVID was difficult at times. So when you are somebody who's running a business, visibility is everything. It's so key. And um, so yes, that is a part of it, but I think also the fact that we wanna make sure that everybody sees the depot. I think that's that was important. Not just you pass by, you didn't notice it, but I think kind of paid homage to the back, what it used to be. I think that's why I think that depot sign is really important to be there. Um, and uh, I understand folks' concerns of kind of in the big cities, like, uh, you know, everybody doesn't want signs everywhere, or things of that nature. But I think here it really lends itself because it's almost like when you're coming into Shafter, it's, it gets people's attention. And I think it's such a beautiful building and we're going to spend millions of dollars in this project. It's not going to be like a rinky dink little project with a, a, a sore sign that sticks out. I think the sign actually goes with the whole project. I think it would look the opposite, look a little funny, we didn't have something of that scale to go with this center. I think that's why so it's not just one car wash, it's a whole center. So I think that's the reasoning behind it, just so that it matches in scale. But I'll let Rick add on to that, but mm -hmm. thank you all for listening. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Richard. So yes, I'll add on to uh, Roger. Thank you for, you know, uh, talking about our project. Obviously, so we're very dedicated to this city and uh, the community out here. But uh, the question on the sign is yes. Um, 
a few things uh, as Roger touched on, you know, anytime we develop like this, again, you know, the amount of money going into this development, um, you know, is, is going to be, you know, north of eight, nine million dollars. It's a pretty large investment that will go into this project. Um, to do that, uh, you know, we want it to be successful. Uh, the, the one of the things that we looked at is uh, this is a very linear project. So if, if someone's at, we spend money to redo this Brookside building and get the attention, make it look nice. If someone's driving on the main intersection, which is 43 in Laredo, we want to make sure they understand and see this is here. You know, don't overlook this project. You know, don't overlook this restaurant or this QSR, or what we're trying to bring in. It's part of this development. Um, I think it's been very unique to Shaft. We don't have many large shopping centers. I mean, do we have Apple Market? But it is Apple Market, and I believe true values with them. But I mean, again, it's not, we don't have a true center. Um, so, so that was something we considered. And, and also, uh, any national brand we try to bring in or the restaurants we bring in, each facility needs signage availability. So we have three concepts, possibly four, with the depot being two units. So that's four individual businesses which need people that drive, you might see it and visually understand that they're there. That's why you can see on the signage, we have three panels because one could be for the car wash, one could be for the drive-through, one could be for the old Brookside building. But the country depot was something that uh, was key because again, we, we talked about this and we wanted to keep the heart of the depot alive and still keep it to your shafter. Um, and uh, so the idea of that is, uh, you know, Apple Market does have a 35 foot sign. I know it is, was an older approval, um, but you know, we, when we look at that, that 10 feet of additional ass we're asking for over the 25, which is allowed with the, with the current development, 25 foot sign. Um, as you can see currently with the eight foot, the three panels, that's almost 17 foot. If we were down at 25 feet, the bottom of those panels would be almost at eight feet. You could touch them with your hand. So, you know, it's, it, it would be a difficult location to be able to put those panels and have them so low. So uh, that's why the additional 10 feet was requested. So allowing to have that clearance and allowing that thing to be seen from when you're driving by or driving through the corner. Um, and, the, and the other thing as well too is, is that the panel, again, if, if we had individual locations, if this was broken up into a restaurant, the car wash and, each individual location at the operating entity could possibly apply for a 25 foot sign for each location per the guidelines. We're not trying to do that. We're giving that up in the mindset of, hey, look, we're gonna make this into one center. So doing that, we're giving up more signs that could be on the, on the front end of the street. You know, so uh, yes, we're asking a little bit of variance. We're also giving up the idea of saying visually, it looked nicer than having three signs up and down the, the, the highway there. That was one thought process that we had. And, and the last thought was, is the frontage of this frontage, to put it in perspective, is almost as far as from 43 all the way up to Nickel Street. How many businesses are in, along that frontage? Quite a bit of businesses. That's how much frontage we have. So along that frontage, you know, we are only asking for two signages to allow to accommodate the three businesses. They're going to be hard to see from each corner. So that was a reasoning behind it uh, to allow ourselves to, uh, give the business the most opportunity to possibly to be successful. But at the same time, you know, we gave up opportunity of having individual signages for each location. So it looked as what was one big center. That was the overall idea. So any questions you may have that, please feel free. I'm here to answer those for you. And so our request is of course, is from us to you guys is to support our project and uh, hope we keep bringing good projects to the city of Shaft like we have in the past. Um, and you know, we're, we're breaking ground on uh, end of the month for uh, the grading for the Starbucks. So looking forward to bringing them in here. Um, and, you know, allow us with the variance we're asking for because we'll build, we'll build a good quality project here and we'll have the signage will be very of high quality in the depot. So yeah, I'm here for any questions you may have. Yes, yeah, so, I have a question. Uh, so say uh, you go to bring in a fast food restaurant, say, we'll just say Burger King, okay? Mm -hmm. And they say, well, for you to put that restaurant there, they're going to request a sign. Okay. So what happens then? Are you going to come back here and want another sign? Uh, that's a great question. Actually, to answer your question, no. That's what with this signage approval will say, whatever we have on this site, that is it. They'll have to go on to this, what we have here. They're not, they can't, we're not going to come back and say, well, you know what? Now I'm going to have one more sign on this. The signage request is for what we're developing for the entire center. 
So there will be no more signage requests. They will have to go on to the even, even if the the proposed business would request, say that the only way they'll put it there is if you have a sign there on the property. Oh, and again, the if the technicality way of that is they would have to go based upon conditions of approval, and we're only approved this type of signage. So for that to work, they have to meet the conditions of approval that are set forth by the, your commission and the staff, and they have to be on this panel. And again, that is my request is for that exact purpose is because I could say, let's don't do this. And let's just put a sign for every individual site, 25 feet, each single one, put a Burger King sign up, put a car wash sign up, put another sign up for the depot. I don't think that would be feasibly right. I think it would look well. I think if we make it one sign and they have to come on this signage, that's what they're allowed to do. So and that, that design is, is it. I mean, basically you, you have three spots there for all three businesses. If that's it. Build there or be there. They got to be on that. Side. They have to be on that, and if, just if, have a monument. Yeah. If it gets filled up, that there's all we have. So yes, there's no additional request. But that is again why we're asking for this variance because this is going to be it. So the individual signs though would mirror what's across the street with Sonic, Little Caesars. Yeah. So we we try to stay away from that. Chevron. To, <laughs> multiple signages. That was the idea. Yeah, with one exactly. giant sign. Yeah, yeah, make it larger, but, but these other businesses would have the monument signs so. though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the monument signs are all within the standard guidelines that are allowed. We're not asking for any variance on the monument signs. And those are all within the standard guidelines. But each business could have a monument sign. They could have a lower monument sign, yes, sir. Vice Chair, I'm going to say three total monument signs is what yeah. you request. Most of that side of the street right now is in trees. Is that, am I right? Yeah. Yes. Trees, grass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's all coming out. Okay. Yeah. And another point I'm making as well, too, is again, trying to work with the city. Just to add that note, the city has reached out to see if they can relocate some of the trees for their own use in other areas where, this, where the city is lacking trees. And so I'm coordinating with them to, at, at no cost to use the trees to relocate. We're trying to make that happen. Again, we, we want to work with the city and be a good partnership with the city. So we could help use this to help improve other areas of the city as far as landscaping and, and quality of site. So on the further furthest southern side on Lairdo, mm -hmm. there's a pole sign there. Request. Yes, sir. Is that a 35 foot? Yes. There's... And then down by the depot also. Yeah, 235 two. foot. Yes. Instead of 325 footers. And would those be the same? Uh, well, it it, it, the signs can look the same, yes, as far as Country Depot, but Again, maybe one panel might be the depot location because that's their location, possibly. I mean, again, those are all determined when they apply for who we get in the location. So again, the depot is a, a 40, 200 square facility. You know, we might be able to get three tenants in there, you know, again, depending how we lay that out. So that's why, you know, any shopping center, as you drive shopping centers, they have paneling for the capability of having signs for the business that come in for that future development yeah you just understand it this is new for chapter and i know it's a, it's a beautiful center I mean, yeah but that would be a brand new thing so that i think what we're not remembering or that they would have monument signs also so when we're talking about three signs two giant and three monument or just three 25 footers Right. Well, and the I monuments would stay as well too. The monuments are also within the guidelines. It would just right. be no, yeah, three twenty-five footers or the two large signs. Which again, I think it would pencil out nicer for the quality to, for the site to be able to have that that type of option. And and so that's what the variance request for is again. And and the request we have is because we are trying to make this into one center, to make it more feasible for our, for the for city of Shafter for the customers are are patroning the site. And the idea is, is you know we want to make it as attractive as possible and coming in you'll see a nice depot which kind of bring back the life of the depot that really people know about here for so many years i don't want to beat a dead horse but could you not do that with the 25 footer at on the depot well you, it, you again it, it, if nice we did the depot sign. with those signs the bottom of the signs will be eight feet so you could literally touch it with your hands so i, I again that's what the additional 10 foot request is for um to be able to get that um and uh so that was, that was the ask. Otherwise, it, you would it would be it would be such a slow sign, and then the problem is convenience. So who wants to be on a panel so eight feet off the ground, you know, visually for a pole sign? So those are things we took in consideration. Again, we we designed this to be most effective for the layout and for the center, and to make sure that it it didn't cause a nuisance in the future too. You know, hate that people come in and damage, and you know, if you give people opportunity, they want to hurt and break things and damage things. So we were trying to stay away from that. 
So that was the idea behind that. Chairman Frog, yeah. another possibility is you could allow, you, you can you can kind of pick and choose the variants. You could allow two 35 foot signs. Generally, it's one sign per project. You could allow two 35 foot signs. Let's say you say, you, you cap it at what the Apple market sign is at 125 feet. It's bigger than your standard 100 foot face sign, but it, it's not setting a precedent of, of twice what the zone allows, which is currently a hundred square foot sign versus a hundred and ninety-five square foot sign. Mm -hmm. um, you may, you know, you may say we'll allow two thirty-five foot pole signs at a hundred, you know, double sided one hundred twenty-five square feet. That could be a compromise if you, if your commission is feeling uncomfortable with uh, setting that precedent. And I think it still meets the intent of keeping the signage high enough that it's not eight feet from the ground where, you know, um, perhaps that's not as what, what a, a customer or a, a tenant would want sure. rather. Um, but you're also not setting a precedent where next week Taco Bell goes, well, hey, right. I now want a 30 foot foot sign with a 195 yeah. square foot. Or you know what I mean, or the, yeah, yeah. or the Parco, or the Shafter Pharmacy, or you know whoever else is on right. Central Valley Highway. But again, that that's really up to up to your commission. But I think my point is, you you can kind of make a variance, but maybe not give it all if you're feeling uncomfortable. That's, <laughs> that's mostly my uh, my my thought to you. Um, to Director Steele, I really appreciate his comments on that. And you're right, you do, it's not trying to set a precedent. And I want to make clear that we're not trying to do that. It's just, it, there's not, all the sites you mentioned are individual businesses. They're not a site that has multiple tenants on a facility that needs signage and accessibility to be successful. Again, like we mentioned, we're putting a lot of dollars into this project. We're doing that because we want to be compliant to your shaft. So this is not something we're doing just because we like to do it, because as you mentioned, if we get a Burger King in tomorrow, um, as Commissioner Union said, is they're going to want signage. They're not going to. They're going to want to be visible. They're going to want to have traffic off the intersection. And to do that, we're a multiple location shopping center. It's not just one business. Apple Market is Apple Market by themselves, and they have. Um, so you know, we are multiple sites. You know, with multiple tenants, up to maybe five different tenants, which is very unique. And it, so I think our request, the reason why we request, is because it is very unique. It is you're not going to have many centers. Most of these areas are already developed out there. You don't have many centers are gonna come back and say, well, we have five restaurants, so give us five different pylon modifications. So I think that's the reason why we're asking for that. And again, we hope you guys could support that for us. Uh, again, because we're, we are trying to bring a great quality product to your shafter. I think this uh, would be a good thing for to your shafter and for this commission to uh, to be behind. And as you can, I, I don't, we haven't um, uh, had any concerns so far as yet. So thank you. Thank you. And again, I'm sorry for any more questions you may have. Anybody else like to speak? Here, please step to the podium. <laughs> please, please state your name and address for the record, sir. John Johnston, 320 Faber Street, Chapter, California. And just, for, just, just as a as a little history on the Apple Market sign, that that sign used to be taller. That used to have a coronet sign on top of it. Mm -hmm. And, and that sign would not be here today. Uh, Mr. Sharon, the former owner at Apple Market, wanted to take that coronet sign down. But in order to do that, he had to take the whole sign down. And so the city compromised with him, let him leave that sign if he'd pay for taking the coronet sign down and cleaning it up. So that's why we still have a 35-foot Apple Market sign. Otherwise, that wouldn't be there. Uh, I, I'm opposed to the 35 foot sign. I, I think that, and, and Steve brought this up the next thing, you know, maybe not Taco Bell because he owns the place, but uh, I almost guarantee you that the fellow that owns Sonic's going to want a 35 foot sign as soon as theirs goes up. And I wouldn't surprise me if Arco and, and the rest of them did too. So you're setting a depth, uh, uh, precedent here, I think, that we don't really want to go for. Uh, and, and, uh, I realize not everybody's as short as I am, but an eight foot high sign is not a problem for me to walk under. So, and regardless of how tall your sign is, if it, somebody wants to destroy it, they will. 
so pay it for me to introduce something. So anyway, before you, you approve this, I would ask you to please consider the sign issue. The, the, the uh, total area of the sign is not a problem with me, but I think having it more than 25 foot would be. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Melissa Snyder. Um, my address is 5509 Young Street in Bakersfield. Um, I'm the project civil engineer. I don't think I said that earlier. I apologize. Um, a couple more notes on the on the signage. Um, one of the proposed signs is um, really close to the Brookside building, um, just because the building is so close to the street, there's no setback. The building is right on the right of way. Um, and there's not a lot of room for, to put signage around the building near the building uh, because there's no room between the building and the sidewalk. So if the, if the sign was 25 feet tall, the sign would be mostly blocked by the building itself from traffic going southbound. <laughs> on the highway. Um, also, um, with the height, there are a lot of trees. And while some of the trees are being removed, um, we're also trying to keep what we can. Um, so with those trees as tall as they are, the sign visibility would be low uh, with it being less than 35 feet tall. And also due to traffic, as um, Rick stated, the development overall is, you know, four blocks <laughs> and it's only a hundred feet wide, you know, deep between uh, Central Valley Highway and the railroad. So when vehicles are coming, especially on Lairdo Highway, there's, you know, very little street frontage. All they're going to see is a sump because that's what's closest to Lairdo Highway. So without a tall prominent sign there, travelers on Lairdo Highway that aren't local to Shafter, they're going to drive right by and they're not even going to see anything but a chain link fence there at the corner. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys a couple other things to consider with the signs. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, me again. I'm Raji Bar. So Melissa, I'm so glad you brought that up because I want to share with you an issue we're having at our Taco Bell in McFarland. Um, if you've ever driven on 99 going south, you probably haven't seen our Taco Bell because the trees cover it. And, uh, and that is a big problem we have at that site. And Rick can attest to this. We have spoken with Caltrans, with our local senators to get help because we can't touch the trees because they are under Caltrans jurisdiction. So um, even Max can tell you from Delano, as you're driving to Bakersfield, you cannot see the Taco Bell in McFarland, which is off the 99, which is why we bought it because why well, we built it because we wanted it to have something off the freeway. Most folks wouldn't put a Taco Bell in McFarland, but we're not most folks because we're used to small cities. And we thought the freeway traffic would help us help our business. But we are currently struggling because of those trees. Literally, we've been talking to our sign company, the city of McFarland, about getting onto that. Maybe you've seen the big McDonald's sign off the 99 as you go to Pastorwood. Um, the city owns that. We're trying to get onto that because of the difficulty we are having because of the trees. Visibility is so huge. When folks aren't from your area, they will go whiz right by you. So um, that is absolutely key. That two-story building of Brookside, you have to keep that in mind as well. Um, and again, next time you are driving on 99, headed to uh, Bakersfield from uh, up north, uh, keep an eye past Sherwood and tell me how you see that Taco Bell. Can't see it. And our signage, Rick, how tall is the sign there? Our sign is 35 feet. Which the city of Carlin, because of that, we're working with them. They're, they actually will approve a 55 foot sign, but the cost of that sign is. Yeah, but that's on us. <laughs> but we're, but we're going to do it because that's how much it hurts our business. Yeah, so we are building a 55 foot sign. So just for clarification, though, on the south end, because you talked about travelers on Lairdo, you'll be developing, redeveloping that corner. So trees and so forth, you decide what kind of tree, how tall, whether it's well, in front of your sign or not. 
Well, Melissa, you want to explain that one about Brookside and the issue? With the she phone? she talked about Brookside. I get the Brookside. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, on Laredo, they can remove the trees, but they are trying to keep as many trees as they can. You know, because just to clarify that, like the McFarland thing, that's that's a separate issue. We we wouldn't have that issue here because you get to decide whether you keep a tree or not. Yeah. And I think it's not just the trees, but I think it meant visibility sure. on the brookside. But her saying the sign would be covered by the brookside, and her point to that was, is that's how important visibility of signage is. Like literally, it translates into how successful the business will be because that's what we are dealing with right now because of lack of visibility of a pole sign. And I just want to add, just to clarify your comment, when I that we, the, the trees are, we're keeping trees there because ultimately our goal is we don't want to have you drive through your shaft or you see a sun, first thing that you see. We're trying to keep those trees in order to keep the beauty of that corner, not to have looking at a closed in fence sump. We're trying to keep that obscure as much as we can. <coughs> Think about the quality of the corner. There's another reason why we're not removing all those trees. Again, reason why the signage. So I just want to clarify your question. Anybody else here to make a comment? Sure. Just one comment on the McFarland thing. You know, you're going down 99 to 75, maybe. You know about that. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Right. Um, so we're keeping the one that is for closest to Lardo. That'll be used for the car wash as the car wash entrance and as the entrance and exit for the fast food um, building closest to Lardo Highway. And then the other two that are existing in between those two that we're keeping will be removed and replaced with um, standard curb gutter sidewalk. And then we're adding an exit only for the car, sorry, for the car wash. Um, people who don't want to utilize the vacuums, they can exit the car wash and then exit back out on a central highway. Okay. Thank you. Is that correct? That, yep. Okay. Thank you. But that's that's the only concerns that I have. Go ahead. You're good that's on it. the signage. Well, yeah, the signage is also an issue. But uh, I mean, uh, an order of priority, that's that's the thing. I think the signage too, I think it'll, I think it's just, I don't know. I, I just don't think it'll, maybe we could do a modification for that or rec make a recommendation and see how that works. Any other comments, commissioners? Yeah, I, I hate setting the new precedent with the, with the sign. I understand what he's after too. But. Yeah, maybe if we can modify. I mean, yeah. like you said, those businesses that we didn't allow that for in the past, if, if we did do that in the past, those existing businesses kind of, that's going to become an issue from here down the road. But I mean, I understand a difficult piece of property to develop and the jobs it's going to bring. I'm not against that at all or the businesses that are, that are planned. No. Uh, signage is something maybe we can deal with. Just try to modify it a little bit. How do you recommend doing that? <laughs> Good. I Good would, question. I'm, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm liking staying, not making um, any exceptions, staying with our current, uh, what we currently have in terms of 25 foot signs, more of them, that's fine, but not, not these big pillars on each end. That's my opinion. Can we approve this now without the signage? Yeah, they're asking if I'm right. Can we ask you? They're asking for an exception to our current signage guidelines. Correct. Yeah. As a condition, if you see as a condition of right. approval number 12 in planning's mm -hmm. conditions approval, if you were to approve this now as is, you would allow two 35 right. foot right. double facing right. pole signs at 195 square feet per size. Um, so yeah, the, as written, if you were to approve, you would allow for those two signs. So if we re, if twelve is stricken, what are what are we allowing? If twelve is stricken by right, there are, it would default to the zoning ordinance, right. which is the allowance of a twenty five foot, one hundred square foot facing sign. A single facing or. It could be double facing, double facing as well, okay. but the sign, you know, because they yeah. front back, but yeah. the, 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 the square footage of the facing would be a hundred feet allowed by the zoning. For example, that's about the size of the dollar general sign. Just for that's comparison. a 25 mm -hmm. foot sign. That's, yeah. a, that's a 25 foot sign with a hundred foot sign case. And, and now again, though, in terms of what is actually existing in the city, you do have a 35 right. foot pole sign right. with a 140 foot face. That, and was, that was allowed under that, a different ordinance. That was allowed under a different ordinance. Uh, under a different ordinance. Um, but it is existing in the city. So it's not something that someone hasn't seen before, uh, particularly in a shopping center such as the Apple Market slash Rite Aid shopping center. Um, so a consideration could be something to the effect of you could allow two 35 foot pole signs at, at 100, maybe give them a little more height because of the second story issue with the, uh, the existing um, building on the north end of the site and a 100 foot sign. Um, 
you know, you, you could allow a raise in height, but the same sign size as you would normally allow. Um, you could allow the 35 and allow for what would be the size of the Apple market, the 140. Um, but we, uh, we, we guessed, although we did guesstimate it with an iPhone. You know? So, um, but roughly around that size. Do we, uh, do we know the, the total height of that Brookside building right now? Being that it's a two story building or a rough not uh, off estimate? Not offhand. Sure. Yeah, please. So, uh, thank you, Commissioners. Uh, the, the Brookside built building uh, approximately is to the roof line is, is about 23 feet is rough to take a given time. So uh, this would completely dwarf any sign we put up. You wouldn't be able to see it. It would be below the building. Um, and it consideration, um, if, if we're talking about signage, again, we're, we're trying to accomplish the, a goal here is, is um, the facility is, we are not a single unit facility. That's a little bit of more asking the variance here is because there's multiple tenants here. Um, all the other signs are individual sign, individual arc, individual sonic, individual restaurant. This is not a one individual facility. So actually minimizing the, the frontage, it makes it very difficult because trying to accommodate multiple tenants on only 100 foot face is very difficult, the size wise. To put it in perspective, if, if we took away two feet by a standard 10 foot panel, that's, um, you know, you got 20 feet gone right there. That's in, in perspective, that's, I mean, a, a two foot panel is not, you know, driving down the street, that's not hard to see. So, um, but what I, if, if anything, I, I, what I would, request if you guys are looking at an opportunity is we have some spacing under the depot that we could as far as sign coverage um, with the 35 footage but minimize that by 25 feet less than the 198 to get that I mean so that's going to that would put us only um, about 30 square feet more than the Apple market again that is that is about a a, a three by ten foot panel so it's, it's I mean in its perspective it's, it's not a huge amount of more signage visibility but we do have multiple spaces. That's why I would, I mean, if that's something you're looking at, I, we would like to work with the city on that as well, but we could take off um, that uh, 25 foot square frontage and, and minimize that the lowest we have below the depot there, but keep the height on it. So, I, you know, again, I'm trying to work with the city here as well too, but again, we're, we've done, a, we're trying to do a lot here to the city and a lot of dollars here, hopefully you guys can help support that. One of the other things to take into consideration is that when and if the high speed rail actually comes through, it's on an elevated track on between the road, the existing freight lines and Walker Street, and it will be higher than the freight lines. So with a 35 foot sign, you might be able to see it over the railroad tracks in the future when and if the high speed rail actually comes through town. So another option is to have one at the south end and not the one at the Brookside building. Right. So then you'd have your visibility at the intersection um, and then the, the monument signs along the businesses. Um, What's the signage on the buildings themselves? Right? Well, there's no signage proposed on the buildings. At all? No. Yeah. So again, we are trying. So they're trying to get everything onto these. So again, we, we are giving up opportunities that we normally would have right to without even asking for variances. But we're trying to create a project that I think will be visibly better for the city overall than trying to ritter the whole building with signage. Because we have to have signage, that would be the next step. The sign along the buildings, all over them. We haven't done that. So that is the option there. But, um, you know, again, what our request would be is, is you know, we have, consider this thoroughly to make this a right sign is even if we put a 25 foot sign at each location, I, I think that would, again, the cost factor of doing that and how much <coughs> coverage of covering across the frontage of Laredo, I think would not be very uh, appealing as far as having additional 10 feet. And we know what everyone's talking about president that's happened, but again, there's one sign that's been here. Um, you know, I don't, everyone's had their signs done and installed and approved. It's not cheap to install the sign. You know, you're talking, a sign of this size is you know, over seventy thousand dollars. So I, I, I don't, I cannot imagine as a business owner ripping down a perfectly good sign and 
why not come out and replace all my signs for 10 feet more footage and spend that type of dollar value for a single business. So, you know, it, it hasn't happened yet. No one's done that yet because it's not someone who's really looking for that because they're not doing something what we're doing. So I, I, I can't, to the argument of someone, everyone else changing their signage out now because we've done that. Um, it, it seems very, uh, very unlikely because of the cost factor. I like uh, that was a comment we made earlier. I just wanted the, to clarify that. The comment of that you're not asking for signage on the individual buildings, but you would be allowed to do that. You're not, you're also not, we're also not saying that's not the case. Well, it, we're not, we, that's, again, each building will go through building plans and they'll have had their own signage application at that point in time. But we haven't applied for any building signage on, on those buildings yet at all. But that's just part of that process. They'd That'll be, be part of the building permitting that. process. Yeah. The, yes. the signs on the walls, because you're approving a sign program as part of this that deviates from the signage standards, they would need to come back and amend this conditional use permit mm -hmm. to, to change and add additional signage, the permanent sign. Okay, what you're what you approved tonight is what they're allowed unless okay. they come back. What is what is your reaction to um, Ms. Forrest's idea of the if you had just a one thirty five footer on the Laredo side? Well, again, the comment came back to is the issue that we run into is because of such the frontage of coverage we have from corner to corner of a facility, it's the real detriment of the business that come in. I mean, you know, the amount of dollars that go in to improve the existing Brookside building to attract clientele, attract businesses, if they don't have any signs from their building way to attract people off that intersection or get any attraction. Who can go there? You know, I mean, that's that's a problem. That makes it very difficult for us to develop and do this project in that sense. So it wouldn't make sense for us to dump a bunch of money to improve that building. You know, it's because it, no one's going to want to lease that out. I mean, you guys have been around the facility. How many businesses have you been that don't have any signages? Everyone has some sort of access to know who they are. They want to know who we are. Come patrons our business by seeing who we are, putting our name out there. So that would be like, very detrimental, I think, to the project. To just have the one sign. Yes, because again, that's that's quite a bit part. If you're sitting on Central and Forty, but I would argue. I mean, I would say that the new people who travel Forty Three are commuters for the most part. If you're going north and south in the state, you're on I five or ninety nine, more or less. Mm -hmm. On Laredo Highway, you could have new new traffic. Somebody who's never been through Shafter, and there you would be seeing the sign in the center. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not sure at all. It, but you know, it's kind of funny to be honest. As business owners, we have a uh, we have people still come into our talk with us. When did you guys open up? How long have you been here? It's kind of funny. It happens all the time. It just uh, it's it's unique how people travel. Yeah, on Laredo. Uh, no, I just mean even people that have been in the city of Chapter. I've had people come in years after opening up saying, when did you guys open up? It, it just, people have tendency to not paying a lot of attention. That's why signs is out there. That's why people put them on their buildings to so get trapped that attention. So that's the reason why we're asking for this. Again, um, it's for this various opportunities because we want to maximize the for our people that are putting the dollars and investing and coming into the facility to lease the space from us, you know, to be able to have the ability to to attract business to their to their restaurants or to the wash. So that's very important. From from that current sign, the pole sign from the bottom of the last little 30, was how wide are those or how far are those? 30 inches? 30 inches, yeah, so 30 by, by 10 feet. So, so you know. from the bottom of that last one to the top of the Countryside Depot sign, you have, what's the total of that? It's, it's approximately 17 feet, sir. So would the bottom of that sign clear still be below the 23 foot of Brookside? That would be, that would be below. Mm -hmm. Be at 28 or 27. 15. Be at 27. As, right. as proposed, the bottom of the last sign would be approximately, um, it'd be approximately 18 feet from the ground surface. So it would be below the existing building. So even with a 35 foot sign, you're still not clearing that building. Just the countryside depot part of it would be visible over the top. Of the that and the, the first, first two tenants would be visible when you're coming from 
the central the north side down central yeah. highway and the monument sign for the for the brickside building is actually on central because that's the only place they have to put it yeah Where the other two monument signs are along cbh the the one for the brookside building faces central avenue it, it, I know it's hard to see on your small site plan. I, <laughs> I, I feel like I should have brought some big, some big signs as big <laughs> sign of that. Um, but as I mentioned before, and we don't have that up anymore, but that sign on um, next to the Brook, Brook site is literally right next to the building um, because there's really nowhere else to, to put it for the pole sign. It's maybe eight feet away from the building um, on the southeast corner of the building. Yeah, Vanessa, if you go to the next slide, you can, it shows where the, in red, where the different signs are located. <coughs> The reason a brick site so close to the street that there's really not anything that could come off the building. No, it actually sits right on Caltrans's right of way. Even if, or even no, if, no way even to even fix the opening to the top. opens into there the right way. No there is <coughs> literally built on the setback. Yeah. And as you can see, the sign even on Lurie Stairs setback up in the corner. So, so that is why the right trees and stumble block that is the sign. So this is a 30 We're very unique. It's a very unique site because nothing else has what we have. No one else has blockage of trees. Apple Marcus open and clear. Arco open and clear. Chevron's open and clear. No one has this restriction that we do. It gets a very unique and difficult site to develop. Uh, that is why we're asking those things. You know, we I don't want we could rip out all the trees and leave the sump out there and try to put in 25 foot sign in, but is that really the corner that people want to see in the drive in the chapter every day? I believe not. So again, it's it's. I know that the, you know, being a fellow commissioner, my, uh, planning commissioner myself, I understand the frustration, the difficulties of projects, and what they have to go through. But every project is unique within itself, um, and this this ask is because of issues we have with the frontage of Brookside Building being right on the the setback with zero clearance. The issue of us being off the corner with trees blocking the, the facility and being one of the longest pieces of the property that are in the city of Shafter currently with so much frontage length. But the project is very unique within its own and very difficult to develop. So that's why we're asking for these variances. Um, you know, and I think as a, as a commission, you, if someone else came in to ask for a sign where they have free and clear and visibility and no problems, it, it, it doesn't have presence because this project is a very unique and difficult project to develop um, within itself. So and again, we've we've been trying to be a good partners of the city to allow, uh, you know, to help with landscaping other areas to, to you know to do that because we want to make sure we're not doing this just to do it. We're doing this; it's the right thing to do for the project. It's the right thing to do for this thing to be successful. And um, that's why we're asking commission uh, to look at this and give the approval on the way this is designed out. And again, if if, if you know, like I said we, we we have, you know, we we could take twenty five feet off the amount of. Uh, square frontage and, and still would be pretty close to what the market is. I think a one use individual compared to almost five. So you can imagine how much limitation sign is compared to one individual use. My, my only concern with the two-story building being there is that even with that 35 foot sign, you're still going to lose visibility just because of the two-story building and the sign being off the road a little bit. I mean, is it not something we could get away with doing a smaller sign or a monument we'll sign there instead? Yeah. They'll talk about it. Just a 25 footer. See them. Kind of high speed rail. Yeah. <laughs> 
What are we thinking? Well, I, I, you know, and I just think of what's around there. You put that 35 foot sign down there on <coughs> the one down by Lairdo, and you're going to have that high speed rail coming through there. I can see the person that owns Del Taco there coming back and say, well, you allowed him to put a 35. They can't see my 25 foot sign on account of high speed rail. I need to put up a 35 foot sign. The Del Taco sign's only 20 feet tall. Well, I said 25. Yeah. Or no, 20, it's 20 feet tall. 20. They, well, they didn't I'm even saying. go to their maximum. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm did. saying. I could see them. Potentially. Yeah. I mean, down the road, are those intersections are going to be underpasses when the high speed road that's comes in? That's my understanding, yes. But, I mean, whenever yeah. that, when when that happens. <laughs> If, if so, yeah. Not my lifetime, probably. <laughs> we want you to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> our corners. Um, so when it repels around along the roundabout that all of our gas stations would freak out. But we're good partners and we work with them. But the reason we freak out is because we're worried about our accessibility and accessibility, how folks come in and out. So to your point of traffic flow, we've studied traffic flow like to the point we have studied traffic flow the way we have, but we had to. When things like you guys are talking about high speed rail. We had to deal with all the roundabouts that came to Kern County. All of them came to our location first. So we didn't see anything. Uh, but in doing that, we were able to communicate with them and explain what the pressure flow. We buy hard corners. Why do we buy corners? Because you can stop and come into our business. We don't buy corners because people live by us. So having that dialogue with Cal Trans was a way we were discussing the food we trying to design the roundabout that helps people flow into our business. Um, and the same thing is the visibility of the pole sign. You know, right now, it seems like you're comparing a one bell taco or a, or a water taco bell. Well, it's just, we're just one business. We're in this shopping center. I think that's kind of the difference that we're looking at here is the scale of the center and the sign scale. They should be in comparison to each other. They should flow together. So I think if this was just, you know, like on top of all corner, we wouldn't be asking for a massive sign. It makes no sense. But I think the fact that this is a, a long center and we need folks to understand that something exists here, that is why the design came in this way. It's not something that we want to see. Because we just can't take that into account. Um, we have other centers in Kern in different areas. People, tenants will be off the bat. Where's my signage? Where's my business? Nobody wants to be the guy on the low on the third they all want to be at the top right people fight for that and it's fight for that so that's something we have to take into consideration the only the whole point of this isn't to make the del taco person a center we just want to make sure that this project is right and that's why we're done and the money and the folks and everything um, and that is all we're sharing with you you know uh, is that we don't want to be this big glaring sign that's you know an eyesore but we understand that the scale of this project is going to be a coming from, and I understand what you all are um, burdened with and have to do with, but I think the fact that this is a very different project because of the geography of the location, because of the trees, because of the hillside building, a lot of different things went into this. And um, so that's why you are seeing something that's different. But ultimately, we just want to be able to be What's the standard <clears throat> height again for the signage? Like for you said, Del Taco's twenty. It's twenty five. Twenty five feet is your max. Maximum. Now it's by right. So if if and, uh, and I understand like what they're asking as far as having the three panels or the three sections below the Countryside Depot. What if that was removed and then it just said Countryside Depot and used the monuments for the individual businesses throughout the would that be something that would be considered? I appreciate the thought on that, but again, I think that's the same thing we're trying to make. The point is, is any any tenant that wants to come in, they're going to want to see visibility off 
the free would get some high signage. Um, as you know, we just approved the Starbucks. They wanted their own pole sign. Um, you know, we approved that because they that has been proven time and time again to drive people into your business. Um, in the country depot is just the name of the facility. Uh, we're doing that truly is again is to benefit the idea of keeping the depot alive in Shafter. Um, you know, the, the cost factor that would cause us to do this is, is extreme, but we're doing that with trying to keep that part of the Shafter live uh, that are going. But the panels are very critical because that's where people's names are going to go on. That's where they're going to be able to be able to see when they're driving, coming through, going, maybe they're going straight towards McDonald's or to somewhere else and hoping they'll maybe pull off and see us. They're not going to see a monument sign that's, you know, 300 feet down the road, only five feet off the ground. Not people see them driving by. So that's really, that's the request here um, to do that. And again, I think the, the real key thing we're focusing on is we're not a single use tenant. Um, everyone else, we've, everyone's talking about, they're single use tenants. Nobody else, this is the first of its kind in City of Shaft to have multi, this type of a scale of a center in City of Shaft. That's why we're having a hard time with this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Clearly. And, and again, and to us, it is three separate things that are, uh, they're just spread out. I know that they have flow to them. But yeah. They're, they're three distinctly separate businesses. Yeah. And, and, that, and again, and again, we try doing that to minimize, because I think having three 25 foot signs with panels and everything, which are with them, so I think would litter the street with the signs and not really accomplish the goal. I think. Well, that's what we have right across the street. We have that. Well, that's the look that we we have. <laughs> well, no, you're right, and you do, and, and, how, and that's. But those are all individual separate entities, right? They're not they're not owned by one individual that's trying to develop it with large center, right? They're not accessible, cross accessible to each other. We're trying to make this all very cross accessible and work together. Yeah. Well, no, it might be difficult, but I, I think that again is, is there's a lot of reason why this is separate than any of the projects you've seen come across your desk in all these years. No one's done something like this, and and I that speaks volumes of who we are as developers because no one's done that type of dollars in the city have to do something like this to bring retail in this area. We have, um, it's, we've taken a long effort to get this property where it is, and a lot of dollars being spent to develop it to purchase it. Uh, no one else would do that, and I think you know that's why sometimes. Uh, but to accomplish that, we're looking for a relationship here to work to kind of look, hey, these guys are putting a lot of time and effort to make this project viable to your shafter. We're not asking for much. All the conditions of approval, we haven't, we've accepted all of them when they came in. We didn't, they were going to modify them or change them. We've accepted all the conditions they've given upon us. Uh, we're not trying to fight any of those things because uh, we feel we agree with the city of shafter. It makes sense, the planning. And, but we just want to make sure this is viable as a business. And can, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. If we were to give you 25 foot, 100 square foot pacing, mm -hmm. would that kill your project? It would kill the ability to build a lease spacing. Yeah, because how are you know, it'd be difficult to be the one, one 25 foot sign. No, no, two, let's say two 25 foot. So let, let's just say we say no, they didn't, the, the planning commission, and, and it's their choice. I'm just saying, let's say they, they say you have to go with the standard. We'll give you two signs, 25 feet, 100. Would that kill your project? Uh, that might, yeah, might be in the drive through and the, redo the, the Brookside building, probably. Because if I can't get signage for the sites, then why would I develop them? I think well, I, I understand that's my that, concern. But, but there's also, you're also saying that even with a 35 foot sign, your sign is half blocked. Half, half blocked, blocked on the north end. You're saying the bottom, the bottom one or two is going to be traffic coming from this direction. Okay. Yeah, the people coming this way will be able to see that. Okay. See all three panels. That's what we want to clarify. So yeah, we are losing something on that point. But yeah, it, it would be difficult. But you know, it, it, but it makes sense to to you know to build up. We can't get our, our customer signages. Again, we you know this this is not just an access to ask. It's been very thought out. A lot of time and money spent to make this thing push and come true. And again, I, I, have I don't no, think we're opposed to signage as a whole. Yeah, clearly, mm -hmm. it's it's the size, it's the height, it's mainly the height of the sign. What does that strip mall with Beach and Lairdo have? signs they have a, a monument sign that's oversized i don't know how tall it is though the plaza the, the one by area. mission bank yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um no. i'm gonna guess it's probably about it's just 15 feet tall maybe 18 and then it says the plaza and then they have the individual panels for the different businesses that are in there 
but it's a single sign and then they have wall signage for each of the businesses. <coughs> And just as the commission mentioned that, so then, yeah, thank you for that. clarifying that. That that sign as is also a variance that was provided to them over the vigil monument sign. You don't see everyone in town changing all the monument signs now because that one person did that. So I mean that's a perfect example of how, of how things happen. So we're, you know again I, I understand the concern, but I think we're a very unique facility here that's trying to do this, and it's very unique to our process. Yeah. Keep in mind that the city doesn't really have. The ability to prove variances. There are very specific findings that have to follow with a variance. And one of them is that we've allowed it in the past. We're not offering uh, an approval that's a special permission for one person that not for someone else. The last, the only variance that has been approved in the 15 years I've been here was for Express Pharmacy and it was for parking because of the odd shape of their lot they couldn't accommodate all the parking that their building size required um, prior to that i believe the last variance that was approved in the city was in 1992 and of the maybe five or six variances that were proposed prior to that probably a third of them were denied so we don't the city can't really make the findings for a variance. So what you're approving is a sign program that allows something different than what the zoning ordinance requires. If anybody else were to come in and want to raise their sign, they would have to apply for a sign program for their site, which would be go through this whole CUP type process for a sign program. So it's not as simple as just bringing in a sign application and me reviewing it or Steve reviewing it and signing it off. It actually would have to be approved by your commission because it would be a sign program, not just a sign permit. So you as the planning commission would have the ability to say, well, the project across the street was unique in that it was a coordinated development and they needed a coordinated sign program to go with it versus an individual business that wants a taller sign. You approved a sign program for the Taco Bell because it has more signage than it would normally have been allowed to have. The sign meets the signs meet the size requirements, but there's more signage overall with the building signage and the full sign. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of a different way to wrap your way around it. This is actually part of the use permit. It's not a variance. And maybe that's just planner speak, but, <laughs> <laughs> so that's very good but there's but there's a very distinct difference between a variance and a sign program and you're not granting a variance you're not making those findings <laughs> any more discussion <laughs> no. I think we're having a hard time with the signs. <laughs> so you've heard, I mean, you've heard all the questions that we've had, and you've heard some of the accommodations that could be, you know, thrown out by the, the planning department here. Yeah, and, and what what what's a happy medium there? I mean well, let's hope that we're not leaning towards, a, it sounds like we're asking questions about how we can change what's being proposed here. And, and like I was saying is, is um, the, the request, I mean, like I said, we could, we could take off about 25 square footage. Again, I'll minimize the signage as far as how much space signage we have. Um, again, trying to make the accommodation, which would put us just a little bit over what Apple Market is. 
um, I'm trying to work, trying to make that work too. I just, uh, the high is really critical. I think, I think more than anything else is very critical because of visibility wise. Um, you know, I mean, panel sizing can be adjusted, but again, you know, if we minimize the panel by, you know, 10 square feet, I mean, it's, it, it, but a naked eye, you might not be able to tell the difference, yeah. you know, yeah. overall. So, you know, it, but I, we're trying to make that modification, you know, because it, again, we're multiple use. So probably what we can, I mean, I, I'd love to be able to do that. And, um, it, and I guess maybe the commission can understand that we're, we're, we're also want to give up a whole sign as well too, that normally we would, we would put in. So hopefully the commission consider that as, as a modification we have already tried doing and accommodating. And, and uh, to be honest, I, I was not aware there was any concerns about the signs until this moment because even the, the comments had nothing saying they were against the signage, uh, even in the way it read. So this, this is kind of a, a little off guard of the fact there was a concern with it. But, you know, obviously I'm, I'm glad the commission's talking about what we're here to do is discuss these items. Um, but I, I really uh, feel that I, I, um, I think the, ideas. the fact that it's, there's nothing like it, that's the, that's the hold up. And, and you are asking, you're saying one sign, but it's two. It's two 35-foot signs. We have one at Apple Market, and now we're asking to triple that. Oh, you know, as far as the property, again, we're doing it for the length yeah. of the center. Yeah. yeah. We're asking the length of the center. You know, we could put in a 35-foot or a 25-foot, but it, it, it'd almost be a waste of any usage. It wouldn't be visible. So I think... That's the reason why we're asking for the additional 10 feet of the height. Um, so I, again, I'm, I, I'm trying to, anything I can do is try to make the modification we can. Again, we'll, we'll minimize some of the signs frontage, but I think the height is very critical. That's all we're asking for. Uh, do you, any of you guys have a, an opinion on the, the height on one side or the other? I, Lairdo. This is the Lairdo side. Yeah, yeah. Lairdo side. I can understand that one being higher than the one up here on Central Avenue. Yes. If you, how much would come off of the the logo sign? Uh, almost twenty five. Oh no, I'm sorry. I I apologize. Um. I, again, what, what they're trying to ask, I hide those, I think keep the height because you could minimize right. the empty space. Right, if you brought space, the bottom up, how much would that You would, you would lose about uh, 30, uh, yeah, 30 square feet of signage. Okay, uh, how, how, just height-wise, how much would that, do you know how much their space is between the, the depot and the bottom of that, that sign? This right here is yeah. 35 square feet right here. Okay, what's, what's the dimension of the up and down sign? Eight by 15. Yeah, but how much would you be taking off the bottom? My my request would be that we just move the panels. Up. Right. Well, that's what I'm thinking. If you take, I don't. What I'm asking is, what is, what is this amount of space that you? Thirty-five need? square feet. Why well, no? I want about two feet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's what I'm asking. So if you took two feet off the bottom of that logo sign. That would almost move that third panel up high enough that you could see it. You're right. Over the building. You'd be able if, to see it. If you figure that the height of the building is going to take off the bottom panel, mm -hmm. that 24 inches would almost give you that whole panel, be that visible. whole bottom panel up high enough to be able to be seen yep. from both directions. And that would also minimize and the then it would reduce footage. the amount of square footage of the signage and bring it in closer to the dimensions of the apple. Yeah, I mean, I think it's my opinion, like if we're, if we're I hate to bring up Wasco, but <laughs> Highway 46 has lots of tall signs, mm -hmm. but that that section of Wasco is much different than than Highway 43 that runs through Shafter. 43 runs right through the center of town, both sides. 46 is on the on the north end of, of Wasco. So it's kind of, the, these. this is a centralized, um, right in the heart of our city, you know, to put these new big tall signs. I, I mean, I've already said this like four times, but that's the hesitation there is just not comfortable with that completely. Um, I just wanted to make a quick note on the math. So if, if you denied the sign program and they did their 
100 square foot face signs, three signs, one for each building, um, that'd be 300 square feet on a single side, double that, you're at 600 square feet, um, front and back on the three signs. Um, the two signs, reducing it by the 35 square feet, as Rick mentioned, brings each face to 160 square feet. So for each sign, um, 320, we're at 640. It's only 40 square feet more than three individual signs as far as square footage. The height, separate issue. Yeah. I mean, I would <laughs> um, thank you for just, pointing that out. But it's um, the, height the height is the issue, yeah. not the square footage of the sign. Okay. okay, that's that's so the height is your the height, I think. Is your major concern. I mean, like we said with I wouldn't the, call it a major concern, just wanted to on the brook side, you you wouldn't be able to see half the sign <laughs> from from one direction, you wouldn't be able to see the sign at all. Um, and then from Laredo Highway, like we mentioned, just wanting to make sure that it's visible to passer buyers because they won't be able to see any buildings. They'll only be able to see that sign um, if they're going on, on Laredo Highway. I think then that's a clarification since the building is so far back off the corner, when you're driving by next to the building, you'll just see the signage to know that there's something there. The comments coming up, they won't be able to see that. So that's, again, we're trying to attract people to come to the business. Right. This is again. It's just, we're hoping to look at it from the point of to help us be successful here. Right. To make this investment become successful and be, and uh, drive the revenue we want for not only for the businesses but also the revenue and brings the jobs we need to issue after. So it's you know that's why the request is in front of you guys today for that purpose. And I'm going to be comfortable, but I believe it's going to be a beautiful sign. It's going to be a, a nice flagship in the city of Chapters in Countryside Depot. You know, it's a Depot, something that the city's been known for. <clears throat> Commissioners. Any further discussion? In listening to us talk don't you feel like that's the the issue is the height not the like shrinking the size the signage or even comparing three to well to the two mean, is shrinking the signage would make it less mass mm -hmm. sure um and i and in part you know just we keep going back to the apple market sign in part what is so imposing about the apple market sign is the mass of the sign um and it stands out there all by itself. This would be surrounded with some of the trees they're proposing are fairly tall. That's true. Um, and it is extensively landscaped. It'll be different from what's out there now. And they're getting rid of all the grass and stuff. Um, but it but it will be extensively landscaped. And again, the 35 feet although it's not allowed by our zoning art, it is existing in the city now. So it's not something that someone hasn't seen before. Mm -hmm. Personally, my take is I don't have any real problem with the 35 foot sign. I, I think it makes sense, especially now that the applicant has, has explained that, you know, to get it over a building, we've, we've, got, we've got these existing constraints to the site. The 35 foot makes sense. I think with shrinking that signage from 195 to 170, I believe he said square feet, it does. 160, 160 was it, sir? Yeah. That's he's even just, better. He's um, that makes it honestly essentially 20 square feet larger than the existing um, Apple Market sign at 140 feet square feet of signage currently. He's asking for 160 square feet as a compromise here today. Um, and of course, two signs. I do agree, as my own personal belief, that because of the length of the, you, you'd kind of forget that the shopping center started way back there. 
and you didn't realize where it ended. So the signage almost sort of like bookmarks or, or table ends the, the development. Mm -hmm. um, my, my biggest concern is precedent, but I think if you were to take it to 35, 235 foot at 160 square feet per face, you you're you're close to where we have something existing now. That's just my personal opinion on it. I think it's just a little unique because Brookside, if Brookside stays there, that building stays there. There's limited frontage in terms of property. Where Alpha Park has this huge parking lot where that huge sign can be offset off the road a little bit. So I see where they're coming from as far as frontage difficulty dealing with that building, not so much on the Laredo side, but on that building. So I'm still kind of, yeah, I, I get where they want the clearance. Right. And it will have a very different aesthetic because the, that market is, it's a, it's by itself. Mm -hmm. No, no coverage on it. It'll be softened by the landscape. Yeah, for sure. And the building. Mm -hmm. Will that be an accommodation, Mr. Judge, 160 feet? Yes, uh, Chairman, yeah, we will make that accommodation. Okay. We appreciate it. Thank you. Any more um, discussion or we'll entertain a motion potential with an accommodation? And what I would say if you're a candidate is just to read into the record the change in the condition you would like to see. Yeah. Um, it's just, a, just to point you, yeah, the one that's dealing with the signage we've been talking about for a while now is, is number 12. Any motion from a commissioner? I'll try it. Go for it. <laughs> I'd make a motion to approve as read with alterations to number 12 as far as the two 35 foot double face pole signs changing the square footage to 165. 60. 160. 160 square feet in lieu of 190 square feet. Second. Oh, second. Yes. Aye. 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 That concludes the public hearing. Close the public hearing. Move on to commissioner reports. Anything to report? Paul said quite a bit. I don't have anything. Thank you. <laughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All right. On the, I make a second. Mr. Sanchez. We're adjourned. Yeah. Thanks for listening to our concern. <laughs>